how much can I charge for my videos? How to negotiate my price with the clients? I don't want to work for free. I'm getting those comments recently very often. There are several people contacting me for that. And every single time my answer is the same. It's complicated. It's not easy to say it. So in that video, I'll try to give you some rough guidelines, how you can start charging money for your videos, how much your time is worth, because this is a really complicated question and how to start negotiating better your prices with the clients. The first thing you have to understand is that there is no direct correlation between how good are your skills and how much you charge. I know a lot of people that are good photographers and they work for no money. I know some people that are mediocre photographers, they can produce some decent photos and they're making 10 times more money than the photographers that are better than them. And that is because marketing yourself and negotiating your price is a completely different skill set than producing good photo or a good video. That video is not only for photographers or videographers. You can be also a mobile content creator and make money creating videos or photos for somebody with your mobile phone. It's possible. If you don't believe me, go and check out those two videos where I recorded a B-roll and I got paid for that. And I shot it with my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now let's move to the calculation phase and let's figure out how much your time is worth. For the last 10 years, I was working as a software engineer and my salary was quite high. I would say that I was earning around 150 euros an hour. I don't remember was it with taxes or without taxes. So more or less I'm calculating that I'm earning around 100 euros an hour and that is my price. Something is wrong with the calculation. What I was trying to say before I realized that I made a huge mistake calculating my numbers and my brain went somewhere else is that the price you charge is the price you feel comfortable with. For the last 10 years, I was working for 150 euros an hour and I'm comfortable mentally with that price because I know that I'm worth that price and my time is worth minimum 150 euros a day. No matter where I plant tomatoes in my backyard, I'll do photography or I'll do something else. I was worth 150 euros a day and I'm comfortable working for those money no matter the area. And that gives me confidence to charge that amount of money. So the price you put in your brain is the price you're going to project to your clients. First, you have to find a price that you're comfortable with and after that, increase it. Because if you're not comfortable charging 100 euros an hour, you will never charge those money. You have to get comfortable with the price tag you put to yourself. The first thing to do when I get a project is to try to get a rough estimation how many hours I need to execute that project. How many hours do I need to record and how many hours do I need to edit the project so I can deliver it to the client? Let's say we have a project of four hours. My time is worth um, around 400 euros. Unfortunately, you cannot charge 400 euros for all kinds of projects, especially if you work with a small or medium businesses. Not all businesses are willing to spend so much money. You know that your time is worth 400 euros, but maybe for that project you can charge only 200 euros. The next thing I would consider for the project is, will that project benefit me? Ah, I'm getting a glass because the sun is shining in my eyes. That's the Robocop mod with the red glasses. These are sleeping glasses. You wear them one hour before you go to bed and they increase your melatonin and you sleep like a baby. So highly recommend them. Now, the second thing I would consider is, is the project interesting and will benefit my portfolio? If the project will benefit my portfolio, I would be willing to work for less price. Because if the project is cool, I can go to the next clan, show the project and everything is bumpy, bumpy, pinky, winky and I'll charge more money. If the project is something I dislike, I'll increase the price between 50 and 100% because first, it's something I don't like to do it. Second, if I do it and the client agrees to do it on my price, I have to have some motivation to execute that project. And money are sometimes a really good motivation, especially for short term projects. Now, let's try to estimate how much your time is worth per hour. I would assume that you're just starting out and you're in your early 20s. You don't have responsibilities. You don't have kids. You don't have dogs. You don't have fishes. So you just need some money to party, to live and to have some good time. Let's say 2000 euros a month or $2,000. Let's keep the number around so it's easy to calculate. So usually per month you have 22 working days and in those 22 working days you have eight working hours. So we have 22 multiplied by eight hours. So we have 176 hours. When you divide 2000 by 176, your time is worth 11 euros an hour. Now here you have to calculate that you have to pay the taxations, the health insurance and all other additional 
taxes by yourself. So your time from 12 euros an hour, the actual price should be 20 euros an hour. So when you're starting out, I would say something between 35 and 50 euros an hour is quite decent price, especially for your first projects. Another thing that plays a very important role when I'm doing the project calculations is am I feeling confident? If I'm insecure about something, I'll not give high price for the project. A simple example, a girl came to me and asked me to create a bureau for her kids. For such type of bureau, I would charge between 200 to 400 euros because it was quite fast. We shoot for one or two hours and after a date it is around three, four hours. So around two to 400 euros for me, it's a normal price. Guess how much I charge her? 30 euros because I was not comfortable working with kids. That is my first project working with the kids. I love kids, but I never work with kids in front of the camera. I didn't know we will manage to entertain them. When we will manage to grab some cool footage because when I work, I want to deliver a really cool product. I want to deliver a product that I'm proud of. And if I feel insecure the first time or the second time, I will really underprice the project in that way. I can gain the experience, I can make some cool portfolio and if something goes wrong and I fuck up the project, I don't feel guilty that I fucked up the project. Charging small amount of money can be extremely dangerous and can bring you problems because of several factors. When you have a cheap client, usually the clients don't appreciate your work and they have a lot of demands. The second thing is that usually there is a lot of client communication and when you charge small amount of money, you have communication with the client before the shoot and you have communication with the client after the shoot. And that can break your nerves because you're wasting so much time with the client, but at the end you're just getting some coins at the end. Usually the low paying clients are really annoying in 50% of the cases because when you have a cheap client, they're usually price hunting and they're constantly comparing you to other photographers or videographers. They don't care about your quality, they care about the price. They don't come to you because of your talent and because of your work, they come to you because of the price and they have high demands. The best clients are the ones that come to you and they ask to create something for them that it's already in your portfolio. They like your style and they're like, hey guys, can you create something similar for us? And these are the most enjoyable clients to work with. Now let's talk a little bit more about the price you give to the client. Usually most of the photographers or the videographers I know will provide to the client a hard price and it will be one price. If a client comes and tell you, I want to shoot some fruit video, what is your price? And you tell him, I'm charging 100 euros an hour. And the client will call several photographers or videographers and everyone will tell his price. What the client most of the time will do is to pick up the cheapest guy with more or less decent uh, quality of the photos or videos. So first I'll gather information about the project and after that I'll give them three options. The first option will be filming a bureau with the phone. I'll tell them I will film the bureau with the phone and because the iPhone has a little bit worse quality than my professional camera equipment, I'll give you a better price. The price filming a bureau with the iPhone will be between 200 and 400 euros. I'm giving you a price range because there's some small things that can go wrong. Maybe I have to rent a car and come to the location. So I always like to be flexible because things change. And like that, I'll give them two or three packages, one for the phone, one for the camera and one exclusive package. I start working with price ranges when I give my offers because we did a huge fucked up with one deal. One year ago, we got a really cool deal and actually the job looked really easy and we charge around 500 euros. On the third meeting with the client, when we were mostly ready with the whole project and with the whole research we had to do for him, we found out that actually there is a hidden rock that it was very important. And instead of charging 500 euros for that job, we could charge something between 1,500 euros to 2,000 euros. Yes, the job was easy, but the thing was that this research was extremely important for the client because he invested a lot of money in another project and this research was a key to decide in which direction to go with that very expensive project. And I'm not speaking about small money like 10,000, 20,000. Uh, the project was really huge. It was six digit number. And when you have a client that has to take a key decision with a six digit number, you know, that research doesn't cost 500 euros. There are always some things that you're not aware of. And that's the beauty of the price range, because if something pops, you can say, hey, I had to rent a car. I had to rent a light. Uh, the project required something additional. 
and when you give a hard price, you're really locked with that price. I forgot to mention something very important that gives me a lot of leverage while I negotiate with the clients. I don't run after the clients and when a client comes to me, doesn't mean that I have to close the deal 100%. That gives me the possibility to choose the best jobs that come to me. I understand that maybe you're not in that position. Maybe you have to start with the low paying clients. If you're in that position, start with the low paying clients, but don't try to convert the low paying clients to high paying clients. Usually that will not work in 80% of the times because the low paying clients are price hunting and they are used that you deliver a lot of work for a very cheap price. Create your portfolio with the cheap clients, but the next time a client comes to you, try to negotiate your prices better. And like that, slowly you climb the ladder and your prices will increase. When you start working with better prices and you're happy where you are, tell your cheaper clients that are regular that you increase your prices and that these are your new prices. If they want to continue working with you, you'll be happy about that. If the price is a problem for them, you can recommend them to some of your friends. In that way, you reduce your stress levels and you're gonna earn more money. But don't keep working with the low paying clients. Try to climb up. If you would like to learn more about cinematic filmmaking with your mobile phone and charging clients, go out and check my mobile course, link in the description. Now, don't forget to smile. Destroy the like button so more people can see that video. Subscribe if you didn't do it and see you in the next episode. I already start feeling sleepy with those glasses. Ah, it's so bright.